What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi, and we're rocking out another integrated engineering part. Well, actually this is the first part. All we've done is software so far, but this is the first hardware from integrated engineering. Today we're gonna be installing their intercooler on my B9 S4. Now, just about half an hour ago, I was out on the back roads of Mexico in the rainy weather that they're having this time of year, and I performed two back-to-back Kind of pseudo quarter mile runs because it's really wet out. I rolled into it on second gear. Got all the way up to probably about three quarters through fifth gear to get you my intake air temps. And what I'm gonna do is once we've installed it here at Rider Performance, I'm gonna get back out to that exact same stretch of road on the exact same day, same tune, which is an integrated engineering stage one E85 tune, the same ambient conditions, pretty close to the same density altitude, and then get you the same tests, two back-to-back -back runs, to see how much this intercooler improves my intake air temps. So in order to performance test this intercooler, we're gonna have to see what my intake air temps are. And in order to do that, you have to data log your vehicle. Now I have Integrated Engineering's PowerLink system connected to my car via the OBD2 port. This is going to log the entire run and it's gonna show just how hot my intake air temps get after I do a couple runs. Now what we're gonna do is after the install, I'm gonna do the exact same thing in the exact same location on on the exact same day and we're going to see how much lower the intake air temps are after my quarter mile runs versus what it was like on the OEM intercooler. And that should give us a pretty damn close to perfect comparison as to how effective it is at cooling the car and improving the performance in the quarter mile. It's cold, it's wet, it's nasty out here. I would never normally do performance testing in these conditions, but Kyle and I are strapped for time these days. We are super busy people. So I'm trying to make this testing happen on the same day as the install. So we have before testing, which we're doing now, the install, and then the after testing on the exact same day. Same tune, as close to the same conditions as possible, same gas in the tank. So we're trying to make this as accurate as possible for you guys. The conditions right now for this before testing are 49 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 450 DA. Because it's wet and gross out, I will not be launching the car. We'll be doing it from a roll. We're logging. Let's see what these temps get to on this first run. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. There we go. That'll be the first one. Turn around and do a second. Here's the log of my first run. I started out at 10.5 degrees for my intake air temp. By the end of the run, I was seeing 42 degrees. That's an increase of 31 and a half degrees. Now time for the timing advance that I was seeing through each gear. Integrated Engineering refers to it as Spark Advance in their PowerLink data logger. At the top of second, I was seeing 18 and a half degrees. Third, 17 degrees. Fourth, 17 degrees. And to wrap things up in fifth, I was seeing 17 degrees of timing advance. Same stretch of road, go in the opposite direction, about two minutes after, same run, other direction. Downshift to second, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear and there you have it pretty much back-to-back -back runs with the OEM intercooler to see what those IETs are now time for the second log using my OEM intercooler. I started off the run slightly warmer than the first at 11.25 degrees. By the end of the run, I was seeing a whopping 48.75 degrees, which is an increase of 37 and a half degrees, which is just mental. In terms of the timing advance, it creeped up slightly higher to 19.5 degrees at the top of second, then 17 degrees degrees at the top of third, 17 degrees at the top of fourth, and finally 17 degrees of timing advance at the top of fifth. So here's the actual unit, the intercooler from Integrated Engineering. It is one big ass sucker of an intercooler, not nearly as dinky as the OEM unit. So what we'll do here is we'll take off that front bumper, we'll pop out the OEM intercooler, then we'll lay it side by side with this Integrated Engineering cooler, and we'll show you the differences between the two. 
Here's the last time you will see the front of my car looking like this, all sleek and black. For the first time, I won't be painting the intercooler, so you're gonna see it pop out from behind the grill. Last time with this OEM intercooler. Now it is fully exposed with the bumper off and you can see exactly how small this OEM intercooler is. We've already installed this CTS charge pipe, so this looks a little different from what you would get OEM. But there it is, last time it's gonna be on the car. Now that Kyle has that OEM intercooler removed, you can see just how much smaller it is than the integrated engineering intercooler. It is thinner though. So what you see on the integrated stuff is it's not quite as thick as the OEM piece, but it is much, much taller, creating a much larger surface area for better cooling. And here's a top down view of the two intercoolers side by side to really show you what I meant about the unit isn't quite as thick as the OEM unit, but it makes up for it in height. It is so much taller, creating way more surface area and hopefully much more cooling than the OEM intercooler can provide. The other thing that comes with this intercooler is a package of all the hardware you're going to need to install it, some mounting brackets. It's so much taller, you're gonna need something to support it and a bunch of bolts as well to put it in place. Kyle has completed the install of the intercooler, this massive piece of hardware that looks fabulous and fits really, really well. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I like what I see. We'll see how well it works though. Look at this guys, what a moron. I didn't even realize it comes with a bung. Now integrated engineering claims that, that is for water methanol injection use, but I totally could have used that as my boost tap rather than having to go with this charge pipe from CTS. The other thing we had to do is we upgraded our clamps on this because the boost pressure we're seeing, there was a teeny bit of movement on here. I think with the shifting of the motor, there's getting some movement and we don't want that to ever pop off because it's behind the bumper and hard to get to. There it is, Kyle has finished the install of this massive intercooler from Integrated Engineering, peeking through the honeycomb grill, a lot more airflow, much more surface area than that OEM intercooler and excited to see the performance of this intercooler. So now that we've finished the install, we have to put it to the test because that's what I'm all about. Seeing how well these pieces of hardware actually work, not just slapping something on and saying, yeah, good to go. <laughs> I will go out to the exact same road. I'll let you guys know the temperature. I'll let you guys know the density altitude. I will do two more back-to-back -back runs and then I'll share the logs to see how much we've improved those intake air temps. So we're back out here, same stretch of road. The ambient temperature is now up to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. The density altitude has raised to negative 230. So the conditions are slightly worse for this upgraded intercooler. Time to see how well it performs. I'm gonna hit start on the logger and do the exact same pull that I did last time. Get to about the same speed and hit it. Third gear. Fourth gear, fifth gear. There's run number one. Time to spin around and do run number two. Here's the log of my first run using that upgraded intercooler. I started off slightly higher than both runs with the OEM intercooler at 12.75 degrees. By the end of the run, I only saw 20.25 degrees for a mere increase of seven and a half degrees from start to finish, just insane. Now for timing advance. In every gear other than second gear, I saw more timing. Second gear, I saw 19 and a half degrees. Third gear, I saw 18 and a half degrees now. Fourth gear, 18 and a half degrees now. And finally, fifth gear, I saw 18 degrees of timing advance. I've whipped around, same stretch of road, everything the same as the first performance test, run number two. Fourth gear, fifth gear, and there it is. Back to back runs with this upgraded intercooler. Time to compare the logs. Last run of the day was slightly different than the others because my car did not downshift to second. It carried strong to the top of third. Now my log will look slightly different because there's no second gear here, but the results should be close enough for this comparison. I see 12 degrees as my starting intake air temp. 
By the end of the run, I saw 20.25 degrees, which was an increase of only 8.25 degrees and the exact same ending air temp as the first time I used the integrated engineering intercooler. Now again, I'm missing second gear here for the timing advance, but what I saw at the top of third was 18 and a half degrees. The top of fourth, 19 and a half degrees, and at the top of fifth gear, I saw 18 degrees total timing advance. We've installed a lot of hardware here on Van City Audi on multiple cars, different platforms. We've always seen varying results. Some have been really good, some have been kind of poor. Today was outstanding. 28.75 degree difference between the OEM intercooler and this upgraded unit from Integrated Engineering. Oh, that's pretty freaking crazy. Uh, Kyle and I were shooting the shit with one another while we were doing the, in, uh, the install off camera. And we're just like, well, what do you think the temps are gonna be after? And we kind of both thought low 30s. We were coming down from 48.75 degrees on that second run with the OEM intercooler. We knew it was gonna be better. The surface area is much greater. We knew it was gonna flow better. But 28.75 degrees of a drop in temp is insane. I never realized how much of an impact this intercooler would make. Now just thinking about the extra performance I get as I go through the gears, I'm going faster and faster and faster and seeing that my timing advance isn't going down as low because there's not as much heat being generated. All of this equals more power going faster in the quarter mile and hopefully quicker as well. A tremendous performance by Integrated Engineering's intercooler. I'm excited for the next video where hopefully I'm back out on the track racing. Perhaps we're doing some dyno testing with another part, but regardless of what it is, we now know that the cooling on this vehicle is mwah, perfect. I am crazy impressed. Now I will say, in the defense of my testing, it wasn't from a dig. So we didn't go wide open throttle through first gear, through second gear, through third gear, through fourth gear, through fifth, like that didn't happen. So the temperature will change slightly more on a full quarter mile run. But this is the best I could do with the conditions I had today. It was freaking gross. It's starting to clear up now, but it's still wet out. And I'm not gonna launch the car repeatedly and just spin the tires through first like crazy. I hope you guys appreciate the amount of effort I go through on these videos to show you guys as close to perfect conditions as I can for these testings. So you know how well a part performs. In the case of this integrated engineering intercooler, wow. Truly impressive, and I'm very happy I installed it on my car. Stay tuned to the channel for more on my B9 S4, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.